Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Bryony and I'm one half of the Indecisive Readers. If you're watching this, I've decided to do something a bit different for this month's wrap up. What I'm going to do is just review the books as I finish reading them. I hope that this way I might not forget what books I've read or what I feel about them. Then it also means if I have something like a library book, I can take it back rather than renewing it many, many times. For example, I have the song rising out at the moment. I will be taking it back today because I have renewed it four times already. So but anyway, yes, yeah, so I thought I'd try something a bit different. If it's really, really disjointed, I apologise. But hopefully it works enough. I have no idea how many books I've read at this point. I'll update it in the last one. The first book I read this month was Of Fire and Stars by Audrey Cockthurst. This book is about two princesses. The first princess, Denalia, is betrothed to the Prince of Mineria since childhood, but she's got secret fire magic that the people of Mineria don't like. The second princess is called Amer... 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 Amaranthin. The second princess is called something like Amaranthin and she is the prince's brother and she likes horses and doesn't want to be queen of any sort in her life. The two eventually fall in love but can't do anything about that because the first prince is betrothed to the second one's brother. However, when an assassination occurs within the castle walls, the two princesses are bonded together in an attempt to find out who done it. I brought this from Gays the Word in London back in June. I started reading it then, I got two chapters in and put it down. It wasn't an official DNF, it was always a I'll come back to this kind of DNF, but I didn't come back to it because I read a couple of reviews on Goodreads and they didn't make it seem very good and so I was just always really hesitant to pick it back up. And the main thing that really really jolted with me was the second princess, Amarinth. Other than the fact she's got a stupid name generally, her nickname is Mare and she likes horses. Anyway, the winter quest for the Book Junkie Trials was the first week of December and I saw that there was a buddy read going on for this and I was like, you know what, a buddy read seems like the best time to get me to read it because otherwise I'm just not sure I'm going to have the motivation to. So I decided to pick it back up for this and I just, eh, I liked the story but... I didn't like the story enough to dismiss all the things I didn't like. So I've rated it about two and a half stars. I don't know if that'll change because I did like it, but I just, there were so many things I couldn't get on board with. And I guess I'm gonna go through them now. I'll go through the things I liked first because there are about two of those. And I think I've said one already. I think I can't honestly remember what the things I like so let's go through the things I didn't and they might come back to me one of the things I didn't like was I didn't hate the romance because they went from friends first they spent a long time as friends and then they went into a romance which is the kind of romance I would do but when they went from a friendship to a romance it went from zero to a hundred like overnight in books, to say that you like someone, you have to say I love you, even if you haven't said I like you first. And so that kind of always feels a bit jarring to me that there's no I think I might like you, it's just immediately I must love you. And mm, I don't like that. But then what really bothered me was Denna, the first princess, had never kissed anyone before. She'd only kissed the brother once after admitting they loved each other one night the next night they slept together and I just I mean Mare was meant to be more experienced in love but Denna wasn't and the fact that they just she kind of initiated it just felt a bit jarring to me I'm told that's not jarring but to me it was 
that was one thing I liked about it though it's not necessarily related but it kind of is Denna is a lesbian but Mare is bisexual and I just thought that was interesting you don't often get as many bisexual characters so I just thought that was a good thing when I was looking for good things a couple of quick things I didn't like about it was I guess who the villain was pretty early on and also a lot of people died in it but it felt like a lot of people died in it for drama it was like oh it's kind of calmed down a bit we'll kill someone else and a lot of the time it just felt unnecessary but also that there was no grieving period some of the characters that died had close relationships with the characters that were left and it just felt like they died and then two days later they were like well they're dead let's just move on um and i suppose when you're a kingdom you kind of have to move on but when they're your family or your friends you feel like even if you've moved on you should still be thinking about it one more thing i didn't like about it was the age difference between mare and her brother thandy he is the younger sibling only by about a year but he acted like he was 25 and mare acted like she was 16. i think that's to do with their characters that mare never wants to be in charge whereas thandy has been brought up to be king but i quite often forgot that they were actually the other way around that mare was the older one and she was meant to be 18. she just acted quite childishly and their relationship didn't quite feel like it fit how it actually should have been the final thing i didn't like about this was the world building it just felt like it wasn't there and there were all these things that were said differently like sun length and moon and I think moon was a month and sun length was an hour but I've just come to that conclusion myself no one's told me that and there's this hatred of magic but you don't know why but then Mare just kind of accepts it when she finds out that Denna has it but then homosexuality is not outlawed, but they're not allowed to be together. I think that's because obviously Denna is betrothed to someone else, but it still would have been an alliance if they'd got married. But it's just, it felt kind of surface world buildy. Like it didn't really exist, it just was there. And it kind of just let it down a bit um so yeah i had a lot of big problems with it but i enjoyed the story so i kind of feel a bit torn about how to rate it which is why i've rated about two and a half stars because i feel like that's average but i really wanted to like it and i didn't hate it i feel like some people might like it i mean i'm pretty sure one of my friends would like it but it just wasn't for me so yeah the second book I read in December was The Places I've Cried in Public by Holly Bourne. This is a book about a girl called Emily who is looking back on her relationship with a boy called Reese. As she went through the relationship, it seemed like the most romantic thing in the world. But after the breakup, when she can do nothing but mope around about it, she realises that maybe it's not as healthy as she thought. It follows her as she literally follows the place where she cried in public because of this relationship and explores what the relationship actually was with the hindsight of the hurt. I rated this one five stars because it's such an important book for anyone to read but it's an especially important book to be available in the YA market. Young adult books are a type of book that quite often get dismissed but with no valid reason. They're really important for young adults who often feel like they're dismissed because they're children but they're not. Their experiences are as valid as someone who's 25 or 30 or 65 and so something like this is really important to exist because not only can young adults read it, but so can the older people. People who feel like they can't access this story or they don't want to because they're scared of what they might find out, might find a book like this better because it gives them a better chance of understanding what they've gone through. This book has content warning for a lot of things. I will put a list down in the description, 
but the main things are emotional abuse and rape. This book was really carefully written. Hollybourne, I know, has done a lot of work with young adults in this sort of area, and so you can tell that she has put the time into making sure this is the best work she can produce. It's so carefully done, it deals with so many things, but in a way that's realistic. Amelie doesn't immediately come to the conclusion that she was abused. It's a slow process and she has to follow these stops first. Also, she does have to get help. It doesn't tell people that you can just immediately solve things on your own. It suggests that you do sometimes need to find help. And that can be from friends or family or even an external source like a therapist. And it was just really well done. It would give, I'd imagine it would give a lot of young adults and older people the confidence to go and seek it out for themselves. It's also a very raw book. It's obviously about crying and you can feel that you can, feel like you need to cry with them. I don't want to say that there's nothing sad in it because there is sad stuff, but it's not obvious like a pet dying or a family member dying. It's just you can, your heart breaks when the main character is going through this stuff and you can't help her. But you're also swept up in the romance as well a bit. You do see all these things and think, wow, this is so romantic. This is just like a romantic comedy which is exactly the point, it's meant to seem like a romance, but then it goes downhill from there. And whilst you are thinking this is really bad, you need to get out of this, a bit of you is like, it could be worse, I suppose. So I think this that was really well done. It's an effective way of pointing out the dangers of a romance like this, pointing out some red flags, and making it easier for people to see themselves. You don't get to see a lot of the other characters because Amelie kind of gets pushed out of all the social circles she's in, but when you do get a glimpse into them, you can see how important supportive groups are to young adults. And it's just, it's really important to see. And it was good to see her make up with some of them towards the end. It's also a very good book just because it's easy to read. There's no patronising language. It's not made, it's not written in a way where someone is better than someone else. It's made to be accessible for all because it's an important issue for everyone to be able to read about. So it's just, it's a really good book. I recommend it to a lot of people, a lot of people who haven't gone through this but also people that might be going through it already but if not it's just a very powerful and important read. The third book I read in December was Becoming by Michelle Obama. I borrowed the audiobook from my library and so I didn't actually enjoy it as much as I may have done but that's basically because I quite like taking my time with audiobooks but someone requested it and so I kind of had to finish it on time. I couldn't extend it. I could have borrowed it off Sam, but I just didn't. I kind of turned it up to a 1.75 speed and just sped listen to it. Is that the right word? Um, and so I think I've rated it about four stars. If it changes, I'll let you know, but that's approximately it. Um, but basically my thoughts are I enjoyed the second half more than the first because stuff happened in the second half. I didn't necessarily follow the Obamas when they were in the White House. I was aware that they were there because my friend is half American and so she couldn't vote at the time but I remember her dad voting and her like saying that that's who she would have voted for, um, that she wouldn't have been old enough the second time around either. Um, so I vaguely knew about them and I didn't necessarily know any of the stuff they'd done. I knew who they were. I knew that I didn't necessarily know that I would have voted for them, but maybe I 
in my young naive self thought I would have voted for them because it's a it's a change it's something new um but yeah that's not actually about the book the book was more interesting in the second half I think because it was more about what Michelle Obama did like the first half was about her going to school and learning the piano and whilst that's fine and it obviously added to her story it just it wasn't necessarily interesting to me I'm not a big memoir -y person I'm not a big non-fiction person and so just hearing about her day-to-day -day life wasn't that exciting for me it felt more like a three-star read at that point um but then yeah I, I got into it the second half where she has a job and she is the president's wife as the book goes along you can see her looking back on her identity and how she identifies now that she's lost what initially defined her so while she was initially a black woman from a low-income household who had climbed up the ladder and had got this job that she was really proud about she suddenly became known as just the president's wife and so it's really interesting to hear how she kind of combated it how she made an effort to be remembered herself all the projects she did all the good work she did all the good work she's still doing but it's not just charity work she, i like the fact that it spoke about when she went on the carpool karaoke with James Corden and how that wasn't just a novelty to be like, look, the first lady is in my car. It was more the song she chose actually had a meaning. Obviously, as I am not a black woman from a low income household, I don't know all the problems she went through. And so it's just amazing to see how much hard work she put in to get where she is. I think we forget just how privileged we are. And it was, like I said, she was always constantly rewriting her identity. And so it was interesting to see how you might do that because of the person you love or to support how she made the changes to support the family she loves and I don't really know what to say but also because I didn't know anything about American politics I don't know anything about English politics but because I didn't know anything about American politics then but know a bit more about American politics now because I'm more online and seeing things on social media it is interesting or it was interesting but also sad to see all the work that the Obamas did that has now been reversed by Trump. I enjoyed it. I, yeah, I think I'm going to rate it four stars, but like I said, I've got a real problem with rating something I wouldn't usually read, so, and also that I don't know how exactly I feel about it. I feel like this hasn't been very coherent, but I had a fight with my laptop just now, so I'm not thinking straight. I'm afraid, lovely people, I have not particularly dressed up for the last half of this video because I kind of forgot I had to film it and now I'm panic filming it on a day where it's cold. Mm, so I've got like a hoodie on, I've also got basically pyjama bottoms on because today I am just applying for jobs. So we're going for comfort over style. So. Welcome back to the second half of my video. It is five days into January, five days into 2020, and I need to finish wrapping up the last year. By now my 2019 wrap up will have gone up, and so I kind of have wrapped it up, I just haven't like officially done this bit. So yeah, I read, how many books did I read in December? got five more to add now. I think I may have read eight. Maybe more? I don't know. I'll put everything in the description that I didn't know because I forgot to prepare for this. The first book I'm going to talk about I don't actually have. I had to take it back to the library. It was A Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison. It's about three sisters who are stuck where they are because of a family curse and their attempt to break it. Um, it is set over like a very short amount of time because it has to happen quickly because of the curse um 
and I picked this up a couple of months ago which is why I had to go back to the library but I picked it up a couple of months ago because it looked kind of cute and I think I impulse picked it up but I actually really enjoyed it the first after I read the first chapter I was a bit like hmm we will see but I think that's just because I read one chapter. As soon as I actually like started reading it, I really, really enjoyed it. The characters were really cute. The family dynamic was lovely. The story and magic was whimsical and lovely. And I just, I kind of enjoy it. I think I rated it four stars. I think it was a, like I said, very cute uh, children's book. I really like how the sisters worked together, how they reacted, what's the word? How they just, were friendly they loved each other and it was really cute they're always like working to try and help each other out i i guessed a lot of what would happen or i at least guessed a lot of why things were happening but i didn't necessarily work out how it was going to finish so that was good i'd rather kind of work out the middle bit than spoil the ending for myself so yeah i enjoyed it the second book i read was one day in december by josie silver I got this on ebook. I saw it in Waterstones in London like a few weeks ago, nearly picked it up, but I'm honestly so glad I didn't because I kind of hated it. This is a book about a girl who sees a guy from her bus window one day, one day in December, and um, decides she's going to fall in love with him. They meet, their eyes meet through the bus window, through the fogged up bus window, in December where it's really really crowded and he looks up and they just know they're gonna love each other from the top floor of the bus and she spends all year looking for him but at the end of the year at the Christmas party her housemate stroke best friend ever stroke basically sister brings him as her date now this would be one thing if a friend were to move on quickly but she's already decided at this point that this is going to be the man she's gonna marry and so the girl from the bus isn't best pleased about this because her friend knew she was looking for bus guy for ages. So I, yeah, really, really didn't like this. Um, I mean, I didn't hate it, but ugh, maybe I did. I picked this up on a whim. I got it from the Kindle for like two pounds because I wanted a cute romance for Christmas and I was reading this on Christmas day and I thought you know I like this this will be nice it won't be too bad it'd be easy to read and it was easy to read I read it in a day but it was just it was so bad most of the book wasn't even set at Christmas which doesn't make it seem that Christmassy but my biggest problem was the fact that it I didn't feel the romance by the time it happened the way it's done is sort of like Love Rosie or what's the book called Where Rainbows End. It's very much like that where it takes place over a long time and they keep missing each other. And the time it happened in this was actually only about 10 years, which is about 20 years shorter than Love Rosie. But I enjoyed it in Love Rosie and I just hated it in this. By the time it happened, I wasn't invested. And I'm not sure because of this that I ever was invested. But... Yeah, it just, I didn't particularly like any of the characters. The romance felt like it just happened because that was the story. I, there were other romances that happened, obviously, in it. And so I was just waiting for something to go wrong with them, for someone to cheat, for someone to die or something. And yeah, the characters weren't great. There was nothing kind of standout-ish about them. And then you spend the whole book waiting for them to be together and uh, they've kind of they've told each other that they vaguely had feelings for each other but they can't really say it so they've like hinted at it but they can't properly say it um and then it gets to 91 percent of the way through the book and they finally say it like don't explicitly say it because she like has a secret name when she admits it but they basically talk to each other in public and announce their feelings for each other and you're like right yay this is finally happening 91% of the way through I'm not that impressed but I'm like okay there's 9% to go 
we can we can deal with this we get a cute reunion we get nice stuff happening and then 93 percent of the way through they finally get together have a kiss and then it ends it's got another seven percent and it ends seven percent of acknowledgements you don't get to see anything it's not a proper romance if they're not together i just i hated it a lot the next book i read in december i'd been reading for the whole month and that is uprooted by naomi novik novak and um it's a slavic folklore retelling about a girl called Anyetska or something and she is taken to this tower by a man called the dragon who is a magician or a warlock or something and she's got magic and so while she's there she learns to do magic and she becomes this all-powerful witch and helps save the world from the woods which is literally the woods and it's just encroaching on her land and it keeps doing evil stuff and it corrupts people and things. And I rated this one four stars, I think. Did I say what? I can't remember. If I haven't already said, I rated one day in December two stars. And I'm pretty sure that was me being quite generous. Although, having said that, I felt like I read a completely different book to all the other reviews. All the other reviews were four or five stars. So I stand by the fact that I am the Grinch. I think I rated this one four stars. I actually did kind of like it. When I went into reading it, I knew Charlotte was also reading it and she hated it. Um, but I didn't hate it that much. It was really, really slow. But because I read it over a long time, I didn't mind as much. I'd kind of just read a chapter here and there. And because the chapters were really long, I would just put it down in the middle of the chapter and come back to it later. I think the world building was good. I enjoyed it. I was confused a lot to be fair but I just I got through. I carried on reading and thought I'll work it out eventually and I must have done. The magic was good. It felt a bit strange at times like it was just words but she was conveniently magic as well but I'm making it sound like I didn't enjoy it but I did. And there was a romance in it that was weird I'm not going to say who the romance is between because that is spoilery, but there's a girl and a guy in it, so I'm pretty sure you can guess who it's between, but it just came out of nowhere and I don't hate it because I just kept forgetting it was there. Like, they dramatically kiss, like proper made out once, and um, then they moved on, that never happened again, and then once towards the very end, they had sex and it was so out of nowhere I was like sat on this sofa actually between my two cousins who are nine and six or six and ten they were watching Harry Potter I was just reading it and it was like right and I climbed on top of him and stuck him inside me and I was like okay I was just sat there like I'm so glad you two can't read luckily it was on my phone as well it's just so out of nowhere and so unnecessary to the plot I can only assume it was an attempt to show how connected they were, but you can do that other than romantic connections. People can be friends and have connections, but it was just weird. But I did enjoy the actual story. I don't know what Slavic folklore it's based on. Maybe I should check that out. But I can't remember what I wanted to say about it. I didn't make notes. I basically panic read the last... I didn't panic read this one, did I? I read the last four books at the same time and just tried to really quickly finish them before the end of the year and therefore the end of the decade. Don't know. I'm gonna uh, do a wrap up of all the Myth Take Reads books at some point soon. It might actually be before this video goes up and if so I will link it in the description and hopefully have come up with better more succinct thoughts by then. The next book I finished was The Power by Naomi Alderman. I started this back in March, I mentioned it in my mid-year video thing 
I'll link that down below. But I started this a few times. I started it in second year when it was the Feminist Book Club Book of the Month. But I have trouble reading when I'm, or I had trouble reading when I was at uni and because it wasn't like proper uni reading, I just never finished it. After reading The Handmaid's Tale and wanting to do something similar to that for my class project, I decided to reread it again and then I got halfway through and stopped again for no particular reason other than I think I got essays and they took over. But I wanted to finish it before the end of the year um, and so we are here to wrap it up. Basically this is about a kind of a dystopian world where women suddenly become in charge because they gain this electrical power of sorts, this scheme, sky, and um, it scares all the guys into not being in charge anymore. Because I read this in two halves, I feel like I didn't like it as much as I should have done. And so I'm hesitant to give it a star rating, but I've given it vaguely three and a half stars. It would probably have been higher if I'd read it all in one go, but because I didn't, I basically just forgot a lot of the stuff that happened. And so it made like the latter half of the book confusing, but I did enjoy it. I thought how it was done was really interesting. The inclusion of like kind of artifacts or drawings as if it was because this is made this is written in a way where it's like a historical book so a man has gone through historical documents found that men used to be in charge and has all this evidence to prove it and is telling the story of four or so characters or four or so women as this power is coming into play and it was really, really interestingly done. I wish I'd remembered it was doing that when I was reading it again, before I got to the end. Um, but I also think it was good because so many dystopias put women as inferior against. So like The Handmaid's Tale and Vox always put women as weak and powerless, which is scary. But it's interesting to read how the world might change if women were in charge. This isn't about making women equal. It's about making women more powerful. So that was an interesting take. I also forgot actually that when I was at uni, we went to the archives of the library and they had the original draft of this. And so it was interesting to see how it changed. I kind of wish, that's why I started reading it actually, because I wanted to see how they changed because we read some of the original drafts and some of Naomi Alderman's letters to Margaret Atwood because Margaret Atwood was like her mentor when she was writing it. Um. So yeah, it was, it was really good. There were characters I didn't follow and some storylines, there were a lot of storylines that overlapped and so sometimes I just got muddled. But like I said, I've got a limited review of this because it was a half read for me and so I can't say too much without saying I should have read it all in one go. But I didn't want to reread it again because it wasn't a DNF, it was just a run out of time. But when I put a book down I have trouble picking it back up again and so I thought I can't reread the start because I just don't know if I'll get any further again so yes enjoy this read it all in one go <laughs> the final book I've got I was reading it for ages but put off reading the last 30 pages because I wanted it to be my last read of the decade so the next book I've got is Tangleweed and Brine by Deirdre Sullivan which I started in August for the Myth Take Readathon, but I set myself an ambitious TBR and obviously didn't finish it in time. I rated this one three stars. There were no one thing I hated about it, but I just, I didn't like some bits of it. Like, fairy tales are never nice. They're never nice retellings, but there were a couple in here where I just wish it had gone slightly differently. Like, was it the geese, goose girls or something? The goose girl. The goose girl was about to be my favourite book, my favourite story in here. 
and then it just got horrible and finished really badly and I hated it. Also the Sleeping Beauty retelling was so graphic and trigger warnings for rape. There were probably a lot more trigger warnings in here but some of it was written in a convoluted way. Admittedly I read it in front of the TV a couple of times and so didn't completely follow but it wasn't easy to completely follow and there were some because it's a collection of short stories and there were some that I had definitely read before but couldn't remember having read before until I finished it and it was only like one line or something and I was like oh yeah this is familiar so there was nothing kind of standoutish about this what I did like was it was pretty much all fairy tales I didn't recognize there are a few like Sleeping Beauty and Beauty and the Beast and Hansel and Gretel that were ones I recognized but most of them I didn't know like the Goose Girl and the Donkey Princess or White Hair I don't I didn't think there's one called white hair but there were lots of ones in here I didn't recognize and that was kind of refreshing because when you read fairy tales they're basically all the same sometimes they even retell the same three ones multiple times in the same collection so yeah it was refreshing to read I did like it I just it wasn't my favorite and nothing standing out to me about it I think the final book I read, I did start reading before Christmas because Sam gave it to me on the 21st or whenever we were together. But yeah, I stopped reading it so it could be the last read of the decade. And that is How to Have Feminist Sex by Flo Perry. This was a five star read for me. It is on my list of favourite books of the year. It was just, it was really, really funny. I don't know, to be fair, if it's on my favourite book list because it was funny and quirky but I really enjoyed it it was informative in a funny way it's like illustrated bits about sex there's a section on porn and nudes and monogamy and virginity and she's done her research she talks about I think there's a tribe in the Amazon where they believe that the sperm from every woman, no, where they believe the sperm from every man a woman has slept with joins together to make a baby. So the all three dads, Mamma Mia, made Sophie. Um, there's also about masturbation and female pleasure and... Obviously it's about feminism, which is why it focuses on women, but there's a lot for guys as well. I mean, Sam's taken it home, so I think Sam wanted to read it before, to be fair. But um, yeah, I, I just really enjoyed it. I think it was a very easy way to access a topic like this, which is kind of shied away from, because obviously women have no agency in the bedroom, because they don't enjoy the sex. That is what the men say. Um, I actually have done an essay about that before. I will link that down in the description if you're interested. But yeah, I just, I really enjoyed it. The art style was quite funny as well. It was um, really nicely done. I think I've seen her art go around before because I just recognised it. And yeah, it was good job. <laughs> I don't know what to say I didn't make notes for any of these and I forgot this is why I usually make notes but anyway I hope you all had a good December for reading I hope you wrapped up all the books you wanted to before the end of the decade and I hope you have many many exciting books to read in the new year um if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing if you're not already if there are any books I've read that you enjoyed or you didn't like or you want to hear more thoughts on, please let me know and I will be in the comments to discuss it with you. If you want to discuss anything else, all my social media links are down there as well. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!